Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. The next thing we need to do to get our quad flying is set up the motors and the ESCs. And we're gonna do that using a program called BL Heli Suite. And you get BL Heli Suite by going to this link, which is down in the video description, of course. And when you first click on this link, you may be a little bit suspicious because this website looks a little, well, it doesn't look like, ooh, that's where BL Heli is hosted. And then you click here for the latest BL Heli suite and you go to a media fire folder. Yes, I swear, this is the actual official BL Heli download. If you click on this link and you do not see this stuff, it may be because you have a script blocker, like a JavaScript blocker. You need to turn off your script blocker and turn off anything virus checker if you don't see this stuff. That may be why. And we're going to download BL Heli Suite 32 because we have BL Heli 32 ESCs. The BL Heli Suite here, 167, that is for the older BL Heli S ESCs, which we're not using. There's another unfortunate fact about BL Heli Suite, and that is at this time, it is only available as a Windows application. So I'm going to click this and I'm going to start it downloading. There we go. And yes, this is, don't, don't, this is not, oh, don't do any of this. This is extremely suspicious. I'm so sorry, BL Heli, this is what you want. BL Heli Suite 32, 32601.zip, or whatever version number it is. Don't click on any of this garbage. Why, BL Heli developers? Get a website, host your own website. This Mediafire junk is really unprofessional. Whatever, moving on. You may be tempted to use the BL Heli Configurator Chrome app, but unfortunately, it also does not work with BL Heli 32 ESCs. And that means that if you are not running Windows, you're out of luck. You have to run Parallels or some other kind of Windows emulator or get a friend who has a Windows app or, or just, this only works on Windows. I've heard rumors that they're working on a cross-platform version of the configurator, but as of now, there isn't one, and you, there's no way to get around that. So, I'm going to open up my file explorer, and I'm going to go to the downloads folder, and I'm going to go, here is blhelisuite32.zip, and if I just right-click that, here I've got 7-zip extract to blhelisuite. I'm going to extract it. Now I'm extracting that with my zip file manager, which is a program called 7-Zip, which is free. You can download it if you're running Windows. You can also just double click on that zip file and you should see some kind of a window pop up or maybe you'll enter the folder, but you need to extract that zip file to a folder using whatever means your operating system has to do that. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to run blhelisuite32.exe. And you should see this window pop up. That's BL Heli Suite. But before we go into BL Heli to configure the ESCs, we need to make a note of what changes we need to make to the motors. And we're going to do that by connecting with Betaflight. We're going to go into the Motors tab. We're going to check this box. I understand the risks. The props are removed. And then over here, with the props off, no props, because we're going to spin the motors. I'm going to plug in a battery. And then I'm going to spin the motors one by one. And here's what we need to verify. Look at this diagram right here. 
we're going to verify that the correct slider number, motor number one, spins the correct motor position and that the motor spins the correct direction. And guys, I want you to get in the habit of doing this because after you've built a few quads, you're going to memorize the motor directions and you're going to forget to check this diagram. But the problem is that sometimes in Betaflight, there are configuration options you could change by accident or on purpose that would change the direction Betaflight thinks the motors are, are spinning or where the Betaflight thinks the motors are. So always cross check against this diagram, not your own memory, because that will, that will tell you that Betaflight's configuration matches what you think it ought to be and that the actual configuration matches what Betaflight thinks it ought to be. So motor number one should be the back right motor. That's, here's the front of the quad. So here's the back right motor. And I'm just gonna gently raise this slider just a little bit and we should see that motor begin to spin. The other thing we need to verify is the direction of the motor. That motor should be spinning counterclockwise. It can be a little tricky to do that visually because the motor spins kind of quickly. So I'm just going to grab a, a, this is a spare business card that I have. And I'm just going to spin the motor and I'm going to stick the business card in there and see which way it's spinning. So it's spinning counterclockwise. So this motor is spinning the wrong direction. Make a note of that. Motor number one is spinning the wrong direction for me. Maybe for you as well, but just make a note. So no, motor number two. Okay, motor number two should be the front right motor according to the diagram. Is it, the, is it the front right motor? Yes, front right motor is spinning. And what direction should it be spinning? Counterclockwise, and it is. Okay, motor number two is fine. Motor number three should be the back left motor according to the diagram, and it should be spinning counterclockwise. So raise the slider. It is, that's the correct motor and it is spinning counterclockwise. And finally, motor number four, and we'll raise the slider. The correct motor is spinning and it is spinning the wrong direction. It is spinning counterclockwise. So we need to reverse the direction of motors numbers one and four. All motors are mapped correctly. If anything different than that happened for you, like for example, if you raised slider number one and motor number two started spinning, stop, you can't proceed. You, you do not fly your quad. Probably what this, well, that really shouldn't happen because the the wiring harness connecting the flight controller and the ESC is pre-made by Holdy Bro. That's one of the reasons we use this flight controller. So really your motors should, unless you've done something extraordinarily different, they should spin correctly. Another thing that can happen is that when you raise one slider, two motors start spinning. And that would indicate that you had a, like a bridged pin, like the two signal pins were touching each other, physical damage to the wires. Like if you nicked the wires and, and they were touching. Another thing that might happen is as you raise the slider, the motor might not spin smoothly. It might twitch, 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 twitch. That would indicate, but first of all, do not raise the slider anymore. Stop immediately if that happens because you can smoke a motor or smoke the ESC. If that happens though, it might indicate you have a bad solder joint on the motor and the ESC, where the, where the ES, motor wires go to the ESC, or you have a bridged solder pad or some physical damage to the motor itself. But we're gonna move forward on the assumption that your motors spin smoothly and they're mapped correctly. And what we need to do is we need to reverse motors one and four. That's the only change we need to make. So I'm gonna disconnect from the configurator. You can't do this next step unless you disconnect. And I'm gonna move over to BL Heli Suite. And having done that, we should see a new COM port appear in this list, COM 13, and that is uh, the COM port for the flight controller. And I'm going to hit connect. Joshua from the future here with a little tip. If you're having trouble getting BL Heli to connect, then power cycle the flight controller, unplug USB, unplug the battery, and then plug USB back in. Sometimes if you've had it connect to, to the configurator, BL Heli won't won't it'll just conflict a little bit but power cycle it it should be good if you can connect to the beta flight configurator your drivers and everything should be correct to allow you to connect to bl heli as well and then i'm going to hit check and i should see esc's one two three four if you see an error message saying uh could not communicate with esc's connect power and data connection it may be because you didn't have your battery plugged in you have to have your battery plugged in so that the esc has power um, you should have your battery plug plugged in if you've been following along. The changes that I want to make here are as follows. The first thing I want to do is I want to flash to the latest firmware version. Now I'm on 32.4 and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit flash BL Heli 
and I'm going to see if there's an updated firmware version. And we can see here the latest available Bill Heli revision shows as 32.4. There's no newer ones, so I'm going to leave that alone. If you need to flash it, you can. You flash it. Well, we'll go through the flashing process, even though I've got the, the correct version, just so you can see what flashing looks like. So I'm going to pick version 32.4, and I want multi. Do not change this. Do not change any of this stuff. Just leave it at default to change the firmware version. I'm going to hit OK. And now it's warning me. Hey, you, you know, they have the same firmware version. Are you sure you want to update this? I'm going to do that just as an example for you guys. I'm going to say yes. It's going to flash. Do not interrupt this process or you can brick the ESC. Don't unplug the battery. Don't unplug the USB. Just sit still, quietly, wait for it to finish. We'll do that now. So now we've flashed one ESC, we'll say OK. And then we can continue and we can flash the other ESCs. Now we're gonna flash ESC number two, but I'm gonna cancel out of this and not bother, cancel. So what changes do we need to make to our ESCs to get the quadcopter flying well? There are two changes that I make to all my quads. And the first one is I change the motor timing to auto and I change the PWM frequency to 48 kilohertz. There are some cases where this will not produce the best results, but that's what I start with on all of my quads. So I'm gonna make those changes and then I'm gonna hit write setup. And it's gonna write the setup to ESCs one, two, three, four, write okay. Now we need to reverse ESCs one and four. And the way we do that is we right click, that's a right click with the mouse on ESC number one. And I'm gonna change the motor direction from normal to reversed. And I'm going to say, right setup, ESC number one, right OK. I'm going to right click on ESC number four, and I'm going to change the motor direction to reversed and choose right setup. And now we should have everything done. I'm going to hit disconnect, and I'm going to power cycle. So I'm going to unplug the battery, and I'm going to unplug the USB. And then I'm going to plug the USB back in. I unplug the USB over at the, I like to unplug the other end of the cable sometimes because this can be a little fragile. So I unplugged it from the computer. That's why you didn't see me do that. Then I'm going to connect in Betaflight and I'm going to go to the motors tab and I'm going to select, I understand the risk, props are removed. I'm going to plug in the battery, make sure your props are off, you numbskulls. And I'm going to just double check that the motor directions are now correct. And I can do that by raising the master slider just a little, not all the way up. And I'm gonna check motor number four here against my diagram, counterclockwise. Yep, number two is clock, uh, sorry, clockwise, it's correct. Number two is counterclockwise, correct. Number one is clockwise, correct, and number three is counterclockwise correct. All my motors are spinning the correct direction. If you don't get this right, when you go to fly, your quad will have a problem. The best case scenario is you start to raise the throttle and it just automatically disarms because it detects that you have a problem. The worst case scenario is you raise the throttle and it flips out and flies 50 feet in a random direction. So make sure this is all right on every quad that you build before you go to fly. Congratulations, guys. We are now officially ready to maiden this quad. It's time to take it out and fly it.